remind you all to turn off your phones or put them on silent mode, please. I wish a very warm welcome to all present here. The session is structured to have a 20-minute talk by each speaker, followed by a 30-minute panel discussion with the audience. Therefore, I request you all to keep your questions prepared for the panel. In today's session, we'll talk about redefining open spaces, concrete versus green. We are very fortunate to have in front of us three very honorable speakers who have taken time out from their busy schedules to be with us. I would like to introduce them to you very briefly, as many of you already know them. As our first speaker for the day would be architect Virat Chatterjee. Ar architect Virat Chatterjee is the founder and design principal of One Landscape, a boutique design studio that specializes in high-end contemporary landscape architecture, urban design, public art, and environmental planning in China, Southeast Asia, India, and Middle East, with head office in Hong Kong. Author of books, My Courtyard, and Community Landscape Design, he is also linked with Hong Kong University as an adjunct professor of landscape architecture. He is a chartered member of Landscape Institute UK and an international associate of American Institute of Architects. Next, we will have architect Sharish Berry. Architect Sharish Berry is a graduate of SET in 1974. His portfolio comprises of research institutes, rehabilitation centers, healthcare, education buildings, churches, and the list is endless. His designs try to achieve an inherent sense of unity and harmony with various natural and man-made elements and forces. Our third speaker would be Mr. Salvatore Rueda. Mr. Salvatore Rueda, the director of Urban Ecology Agency of Barcelona, has procured degree in biological science, degree in psychology, and a diploma in energy management from University of Barcelona. He also obtained a diploma in environmental engineering. He has written various scientific and technical articles about urban planning and has been a speaker at many national and international conferences and postgraduate programs. His most relevant works are Urban Mobility Plan of Barcelona, Spain, Urban Regeneration Plan of Historic Center of Quito, Design Manual of Public Space in Bronze Airs, Participation in Great Moscow Urban Planning Enlargement, Assessment of Urban Master Plan of a Neighborhood in Toulouse, France. Lastly, to moderate the session, we'll have architect Mukul Goel. He's a practicing architect from Jaipur and has done many landscape projects in and around Rajasthan. He's also the co-convener for Arcasia 2017 Forum and Chairperson of the Technical Sessions. So I would now call upon our first speaker, Architect Virat Chatterjee, to come on stage. A very good morning. And uh, first of all, I must say that I'm really happy to be here. Because you talk about happiness in architecture. And, and also, I want to thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to actually present some ideas of the way we work. I think uh, we already you know, had a very kind of, you know, uh, brilliant start yesterday. We had a kind of, you know, the idea of, of how we want to make our spaces really exciting. And from my experience, you know, I've been working in many, many countries in Asia. And what intrigued me is the idea of, uh, of culture, the different culture these different you know, countries have. So I, I, I really thought about it, actually, how from from design point of view, from landscape point of view, can really get inspired from these different cultures and use them. And we heard yesterday, you know, the, the idea of a nature, the idea of culture, and the idea of uh, future. So the, the attempt for, for my company is to, to really create a new manifesto, which we talk about, you know, kind of uh, the idea of a land culture, a new paradigm. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a series of projects where we wanted to really look at different contexts and try to get those ideas into the landscape design and create a dialogue as a part of the, the design process. Oops. Okay, thank you. So it's about, you know, we talk about sustainability. I think there are a lot of eminent speakers will be talking about this uh, later um, uh, after me. And I think that the idea is not only you know, creating a green environment. But the idea is to, the idea of land culture is to really think about the social sustainability element and then how can create sort of like a, initiate a sustaining dialogue between uh, culture and landscape design. So what I, what I really did was to, to really look at, you know, different projects in different parts of the world and the process from very small to quite large and to really explain the idea of this manifesto, how we can really talk about the idea of a land culture. The, the first one, I mean, you talk about you know, concrete versus green. Well, we can't get any more concrete than Hong Kong, which is my home. So, so the, the idea was really in this dense environment, how do you, how do you bring landscape? So the so idea is, what is landscape? I think the, one of the ideas for bringing landscape here, actually, we try to bring nature. Although maybe sometimes it's symbolic, because you know, in, in, in this current context, we have to accommodate parking, so the landscape is not on the ground, but on the, on the podium. So also the, the, the aspect of bringing landscape is not just you know, symbolic gesture or the nature, but also that nature has to fulfill the, the idea of, uh, of you know, functionality, the idea of bringing you know, social and cultural element, a significant aspect of the, of the landscape is what we need to deal with as a landscape architect. So I think if you can look at this, it's a, it's a concrete, and within the concrete, we have a small dot, which is our smallest project. Uh, which is uh, which is you know a kind of a roof garden, roof roof terrace, and and uh, and if you know Hong Kong, actually Hong Kong is quite dramatic. It has a very dense core, but actually around the, the city, there are a lot of you know uh, kind of hills, a lot of you know country parks where you can really go and walk around. So the the the, the brief was how we can really bring the idea of nature. I mean, it's a symbolic way within this small kind of roof garden of this of this project. So the, one of the concepts was to, to look at the, the really the unique landscape of Hong Kong and try to create the surrounding of this you know, kind of green mountain and try to create some greenery into this small element, almost the idea of interpretation of this mountain into very much flatter kind of aspect so we can create a backdrop of green and bring nature, but also at the same time you really address the idea of functionality. Because if you have totally green, then the space becomes non-functional. So always this dialogue, you know, this kind of uh, way that we want to articulate these two elements together. So these are some of the images you can see. We wanted to create sort of like a though, sort of like a very simple space. At the same time, we wanted to create the, the, the green wall, which is uh, one of the highest green wall in Hong Kong. It's 46th floor. You know, everything is, is very high in Hong Kong. So some details, you can see the, the textural element because, because of, the, of the, 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 the beauty of nature is, is this diversity. The idea of nature is being it's a uh, it's different texture, so the the idea of kind of uh, bringing the mountain element and flatten it to create sort of like a context. So also look at different textures of this of this green wall. So you can see the spectacular view of the of the Victoria Harbor. And then at night, so the the idea of not only create the design but also lighting. I know there are a few. I think there's a few talks of this uh, of this great event will be on on lighting as well. So for us to integrate the idea of not only during the day how we catch sun, but also how we kind of use lighting to maybe kind of look at certain elements in design and to emphasize or to just play down some of the some of the features in design. And this is the side that you can see. You can imagine, you know, like in a film, like James Bond coming out from this uh, jacuzzi. So it's really a, a spectacular scene with this uh, wonderful, you know, Hong Kong Hong Kong skyline. So from that, something which is very small, so I wanted to take you through how this idea of land culture can be used in other different way. And this is actually an internal landscape, which is, uh, we saw something external. This is uh, internal, and this is actually a, a clubhouse we did in Shenzhen, again, which is, which is also another concrete jungle. 
So I think the again going back to the to the idea of concrete versus green. Well, how do you really bring this uh, element not only outside but also also inside? So again, you can see the site again. A bit sort of like a dot into this uh, this vast you know kind of a city. So here actually it's a it's a it's a tea house. So in Chinese culture, you know, tea is very very important. You know, it's like almost part of a ceremony. Sometimes you go to you know to meetings. You meeting. I went to many meetings with clients, and then you know having tea with them is very important because actually when you start talking, you know the the, the it's a part of this whole cultural gesture. So the the tea is not only just uh, you know as a plant, but also it has got its uh, kind of every cultural landscape, which is also a part of cultural landscape, because you know some landscape is wilderness forest, but sometimes we create our own landscape. We create our own crop fields. We create our orchard. This is all man-made. So the the, 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 the the tea gardens are actually also a quite a dynamic part of cultural landscape. So the idea is how we can bring this cultural landscape within within the design, which is the scale is again shrunk addressed to the space and scale, to functionality, and still has a strong cultural dialogue. And then we have the idea of concept of a tea house. You know, they are set, as you can see in this, uh, in this uh, famous Chinese painting, so the idea of the mountain, and you have the small gallery. Within the gallery, we really come here, and then you kind of enjoy your tea with your friends, or read poetry, or actually, you know, have some maybe, or contemplate, or, you know, have a very relaxing time. So with, with drinking tea is this idea of you know something very relaxing, contemplative is very important, and how we can really bring the cultural landscape within this project. So we did a lot of study that the, the space was very narrow, as you can see in the plan in a minute, but how we can really bring the idea of the, the tea terrace, the idea of this idea, the abstraction of something very, very big, but still a cultural landscape within this, uh, within this small space. This is actually the plan. So you can see that the idea was to create almost like a backdrop. You remember the painting which you saw is just like a tea house, and then behind you have this wilderness. And of course, we cannot bring wilderness or nature of that scale within our project. But again, as I mentioned before, like the part of the manifesto to try to create this dialogue that actually brings the kind of a connection between a cultural landscape within a context which actually celebrates that kind of a tree drinking culture in, in, in China. So we did. We use, you know, a lot of uh, because for us, landscape design is not, uh, you know, two-dimensional. It's a three-dimensional. We live in a three-dimensional space. We feel three-dimensional, you know, environment. So for us, we use a lot of three-dimensional techniques to really try to understand, to articulate the the spatial quality. So we did a lot of, you know, models, and of course, I mean, everyone uses these days, you know, uh, renders to to really kind of articulate those uh, those elements, almost like a sculpture. And then you can see this is finished. So the, 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 the whole idea was to, to, to bring those kind of, a, you know, when you start to visualize the design, to start to do you know, renders or models, I think it is very important actually to show how actually come to the final design. So create this kind of a very kind of a dynamic you know, layering of almost the abstraction of, a, of, a, of tea terrace. And actually, we, we change it into not, of course, tea, because tea will not grow within this confined environment by changing into, into water. So the, the, the question was, how do you design a water feature in a tea gallery? So we kind of thought a lot about this. And then the, the one of the ideas that came up with our mind was it's the same idea as we pour tea into a tea cup. So if you go to a kind of a, a tea uh, kind of a drinking session, sometime they will pour the tea, and then the water will come around the cup. So there's always just the water just kind of a kissing along the side of the cup. So we wanted to create that element in our water feature design. So you can see this very kind of very simple water feature that actually comes down and gives the very kind of you know very kind of a soothing kind of very kind of a tranquil effect. And then this is the part of the abstraction of using not only the idea of the hill at the backdrop, you can see the idea of the stepping stone and the idea of the going into the tea house. The third one, actually, this uh, this is a this is a hotel. We just won the best, you know, small hotel award. And this is in Mahabalipuram. 
it's also it has got you know another kind of a dynamic you know kind of a history of culture this is a fantastic you know uh, stone carving tradition so the concept was to create really a small resort where you can really engage local craftsmen into the design so you see it's not only about creating the greenery bringing nature but also how we engage local craftspeople and also take the kind of abstraction from the the fantastic you know historic temple architecture we already saw today earlier how we can celebrate the heritage which is there in this country and use them as a part of the part of the design so he spoke with them and then and then we looked at you know do the study and went to all these you know fantastic you know uh, kind of temples and try to understand the special quality and how we can use them in a very contemporary way in our in our design so primarily the focus one also it's a big kind of convention hall but the, the main focus was on the on the on the right hand side of the screen which is like a small hotel and resort and create this very kind of green environment where actually in chennai and mahabalipuram is very hot so you have to really address the heat and create a very shaded uh, environment so again i think we went to doing series of views and renders to understand the space and then after doing this and we went to how we can really kind of look at the 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 design itself and take some elements again transfer them into much more contemporary language within the overall kind of a dear kind of a kind of a complex so almost you're looking at these uh, when you go to mahabalipuram you see these temples and scattered around and we wanted to have the same idea that these features these kind of you know frames can be scattered around within the within the site so i'll take you to some of the images there's the pool you can see the frame and you can see these ideas of almost like these complex have been abstracted within this uh, within this uh, within this uh, within our project so we tried to frame and also the idea of this uh, wall these the, the the temples are very you kind know, of very dramatic dynamic simple but at the same time it very kind of an interesting you know carved walls and carved elements we said maybe we try to understand those and then integrate them into our into our uh, design you can see with the play with the shadow and then the try to frame the 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 overall landscape and again i think the how we kind of uh, look at the the idea of lighting you know sometimes the light can be direct the same other other time the light can be indirect and then gives a totally a different illusion in the overall design so we wanted to use the lighting is from behind and create this almost like a glowing you know kind of a motif within the within the landscape the next one is much more public this is a place called uh, quy nhon uh, which is in a coastline of uh, vietnam and then this is a public park so we wanted to create a culture park in vietnam so i think you know vietnam is has got again a very kind of a rich cultural heritage especially this place which is a sort of like a you know a, a origin place for vietnamese kung fu and also drum and we and the client we had a lot of interaction with the client how we can really you know kind of engage our design based on this concept so so we said we're going to talk about the idea of the drum and the different elements that the drum start to create defining not only the the structure of the park but also different elements that actually start generating from the park so again this is a this is a city and then we have this the park which is along the along the coast and then the idea of the the drum so again look at the look at the form and then and then how we can use the form and then kind of that can help us to to really articulate the 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 park structure and these curves that are try to engage with the with the sea and also with the city and there's the plan this is still ongoing project for us so again you see the 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 shape has been informing us to create a series of other elements within the park design and also we were asked to create some structures or even some sculptures within this uh, within this park and we also use 3d models uh, on a 3d printer within our office to really try to understand and create you know small scale model for us because as i mentioned you know kind of it's all our you know three dimensional experience just at night and again i think uh, this part is also quite famous for its champa temple so the idea is not copying you know what is there but try to really create the spatial experience of these of this temple so again it was like a sculptural kind of abstraction of the temple form into something quite uh, interesting almost quite a kind of like a kind of a kind of a land kind of a sculpture 
So the images during the day and night, as I mentioned, is very important to really articulate uh, elements for the both the day and the night. And then the idea of using Kung Fu gestures as a part of the design panels. And then they also we want to ask to actually really also articulate, because this part is also famous for many, many poets and musicians and how to include the idea of poetry into this overall kind of a park. So again, the, the, the use of you know, uh, uh, poetry as a part of the panels, as engraved to, again, sort of like a, the, the sculptural kind of abstraction of the, of the, of the design. So again, using 3D models to articulate the space and how a person will feel, and again, uh, 3D uh, renders. So this one is also, you know, also in Vietnam, but this is a, a villa project. Again, we, this is a part of a competition, international competition, which we won. And again, the client asked us to try to you know, look at the, how we can create a branding, create an identity for this project. And also, we looked at the cultural element of Vietnam. We talked about the idea of the drum. And this one, you know, Vietnam is one of the world's largest producer of rice. So the, the context of this project was very close to the rice growing region of Vietnam. So we looked at this idea of rice, the idea of rice fields, the simple geometry, and the structure of the rice, and even the shape of the rice itself. Then again, it's, can you see, is the concrete, and this is green. So the idea of the, the, the simple geometry of the rice fields in the design, and even the shape. And if you hold a grain of rice against light, you can see the translucency of this, of this light that comes through. And we wanted to use this in the part of the design which is almost becoming like a sculptural feature. And from the shape, we generate a series of elements as a part of the overall branding of the, of the design. So I'll take you through the, the diagrams and how and some images to really show the design process. That's the plan, which is a villa, and then you can see the, some of the renders. It talks about the during design process, the understanding of the form and the shape, and then this is finished. So using the same kind of you know, texture and the, then the form, and then, and then using in a different context. So the one idea, one cultural abstraction, can generate many, many ideas in the overall design. Part of the screen, and part of shadow. I think we, we talk a lot about sun and shadow. You know, the, I think there's a famous saying by Master Louis Khan that the sun knows how wonderful it is when it falls on the building. I want to extend it further when it falls everywhere. Because in, you know, in Asia, the sun angle is very high. And actually, the sun can be part of the new design team. They can create a new pattern on the, on the ground. And then we also looked at some cultural elements of Vietnam. You know, Vietnam is, is a lotus. is a national flower there, like in India. So the idea is to really create a sculptural form for even to engage kids. And even the water is switched off. You can use them as a part of the, you know, the, the play, uh, play element. And this is our last project, which is much bigger scale. The part of the master plan, this is in Philippines. And uh, the uniqueness of the project is this is actually uh, an old factory. So there's a, there's a plywood factory. So massive amount of concrete already there. So if you see the green kind of outline, and the idea was to create a central park and take away the concrete and return back to the, to, the, to, to the green as a part of the overall master plan and to articulate the edge of the, edge of the water. So I'll take you through the idea of the, ins the inspiration comes from the uh, uh, textile called Tinalac, which is very famous in Philippines, and use them as a part of the abstraction. So again, the, the cultural element that being used in a different form and from one geometry, we create mini geometry to articulate the space, the central green, and then the, the, the seafront. So with this, I think I want to thank you all for the opportunity. And I think with this, with this idea of you know, linking culture with the landscape, I think can bring a lot of you know, unique experience within the within different countries which we are working. 
And I think that might help us, and hopefully we can all go back to the idea of which we heard yesterday, kind of a, the idea of uh, nature, culture, and future can all bring you know, really happiness to all the spaces which we design. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Virat, sir. I would now call upon architect Shirish Berry to come up on the stage and do the presentation. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. And I thank uh, Arkesia and IA for inviting me here to speak at this international forum. Today I shall speak about uh, redefining open space in their humble architectural context at the scale of buildings and campuses that I designed and not at the vast urban or the regional scale. To start with, let me narrate to you a story I would heard a long time back. A dedicated hardworking farmer gets an abundant, neglected piece of land somewhere and he works very hard at it. He works so hard and so diligently and with so much passion that he transforms that neglected barren land into a paradise. And then he has a friend visiting him, he, a priest. His friend is a priest and he visits him and he is also surprised and he says, it is amazing. And he tells his friend, this is the amazing thing you have done in partnership with the great Lord. He says, the peasant says, thank you, but you should have seen this place when it was only with him. You know? <laughs> when I was, so that what I'm trying to say, the moral of the story is that in our human ecosystems, we always need to be, have the cooperative, symbiotic, balanced involvement of man and nature together. So the theme of this session seems to pit the concrete against the green in the context of open spaces. So at the outset, allow me to slightly modify this terminology from concrete versus green to man-made with the natural. So it's, they're working together. They're not against each other. Uh, so in any human habitat, both of them will always have to coexist, coexist. But they should do so without overpowering the other. Open and semi-open spaces are an absolutely essential ingredient of our architectural spaces. They not only relieve the monotony of the enclosed uh, spaces, but they add a certain healthy freshness and a sense of joy to the spatial ambience. They reach out to the infinite through the sky. They improve the microclimate and become lungs for the buildings, or for that part, of the entire settlement. They also encourage and enhance human interaction. Thus, they help us in bringing us closer to nature. These open spaces help us in bringing us closer to other human beings. And finally, in that silence of certain open spaces, they help us in bringing us closer to our own selves. Now, they may be formed fully by the concrete, like the famous uh, Sark Institute, Louis Carl Sark Institute. There's no green here. But still it has a certain, uh, what, uh, a presence. Or like our step well here. There is no green. Or it could be green like this, which is also very good. Or we could have a combination of the man-made and the green. So all can be relevant and good in their own context. It is not the, like this is the man made and the green together. This is the famous High Line in New York. It is not the tangible concrete and the green, but the intangible, immeasurable feeling or the ambience this open space creates. That is what is important. How that space touches your heart is of utmost importance. I'll tell you a couple of uh, incidences. 
like this is a primary school learning living cluster that I did uh, for a school building. And in that, on that side there were so many trees. But this tree was uh, my favorite. I made a courtyard and open space around it. And the uh, learning classrooms and dormitories are all around. So when I visited this place about uh, five years after the uh, building was completed and I was talking to the teachers, uh, just an uh, informal chat. They said the teacher was telling me, oh, the kids are very happy here, they are more creative, they are more uh, less violent, joyful and all that. And then she told me one very interesting thing. She said that they had given these uh, second, third, fourth standard kids an essay to write. You know, like we have written in our childhood also, like my best friend. And most of the children, 50, more than 50% of the kids, wrote an essay on this tree as their best friend. Now, this is what architecture can do. It should touch you somewhere. And these kids, when they grow up, they will hesitate to cut a tree because of the rapport that they have developed with this tree in their formative years. Now, there's another story, a uh, small narration. Like, this is an open space that I've created as an interactive space for uh, Muktangar. It is a drug de-addiction center in Pune. And this creates a lot of transparency in the space and people are using it uh, in a very beautiful way. But once I was there and one guy came to me and asked me, are you the architect of this place? I said, yes. He said, I, I was here as a patient. He was an addict. He was there as a patient. He has lived there for about five weeks. And he said that this patch of blue sky that I saw every time I was inside, was my inspiration. I had never thought of that. But see how spaces uh, talk. Because in this space, it's all a controlled space. They are not allowed to go out, they are not allowed to, you know, five weeks they have to be confined in this area. So he said that this blue patch of sky was the symbol of the outside world, which was beckoning him, you know, which was calling him. And whenever he came here and looked at the blue sky, he wanted to get cured, you know, he wanted to go out. <laughs> from this place. <clears throat> so, uh, pure undisturbed nature is great and it can joyfully exist without human intervention. Whatever form, it may be a whatever kind of an ecosystem, desert, rainforest, but their man, uh, but humans and their man-made environment cannot exist without the natural environment. Nature can exist without the concrete, without man, but man cannot exist without the uh, natural environment. Serve that way. <laughs> so, as an architect, I always try to strike a dynamic balance between these two apparently opposing forces to create diverse, harmonious, symbiotic and beautiful open spaces. In India, we are very lucky to have a moderate climate that allows us this wonderful advantage of functional open spaces. And we as architects must make the maximum out of it. Because when I have some friends coming from Norway, Sweden, or the, from even from the US or different places, they say, oh, we can't, it's so nice, so beautiful, but we can't have it there. <laughs> because the climate doesn't allow it sometimes. Uh, an open space does not exist in isolation. It is open because there is an enclosed space next to it. Thus, the relationship of the enclosed space with the open space becomes very relevant and then the transitional semi-open spaces between the open and the enclosed spaces also acquire a greater importance in the overall design scheme. Sometimes on a big site, I have tried to retain uh, <clears throat> some of the open spaces as patches of undisturbed green, of wilderness <coughs> with minimal human involvement. But most of the spaces in and around my buildings have been shaped and defined by the joint collaboration and contribution from nature and as well as man, from the concrete and the green. Like if you see this, this was the side before. This is uh, again 
in, in Pune, the National Center for Cell, uh, Cell Sciences said. This hill was there. I like this hill so much that I said, why, why can I not bring that hill inside my place in a, more, in a more articulated way? So this is what we did. The hill is there and it is flowing inside through, because we didn't make a compound wall. That hill doesn't belong to us. It is in somebody else's property, but we created a grill, a transparent grill through which the green flows into my campus. Now, uh, open spaces can be of different types. They can be spaces in front and in between the buildings. Like here, we created a symbolic uh, plaza for uh, Ayurvedic, Ayurveda, College of Ayurveda and uh, Hospital for Ayurveda, where the health of the mind was as important as the health of the body. So it created a space for a meditation hall and a yoga hall with a Pancha Mahabhuta Kunda, which are the building blocks of life for Ayurveda, in Ayurveda. This is an um, upcoming project with, uh, for an art center. Sorry. There's some rocks on the side at the entrance. Spaces in front of the building and between the buildings in the school complex. This is an institute of management development, where again the spaces in between the buildings become very interesting spaces, a storytelling courtyard or people can uh, interact from here, that man is waving to this guy. These are in between spaces, the building. Then open space as a courtyard space. Sorry. Yeah, this is a, a courtyard in a large 500-bedded hospital. So when a patient comes inside, because of the natural light, the natural greenery here and in the side courtyard there, he doesn't feel that he is in the hospital, and so the space tends to get acquire a, a, a healing quality. This uh, building is almost uh, half a million square feet in uh, size area. And this was not enough, so we've now made another building for super specialty, which is about three and a half. So the total built up area of the hospital is about nine lakh square feet. Yeah. Now, this open space is uh, created as an arrival space for this Institute of Management uh, in Mysore with the Chamundi Hill at the back. But this serves in many different ways. It, uh, it, this is where people from three or four areas gather and they have chance meetings here, and uh, this space encourages interaction. There are students from eight different countries who had come, so they, they decided to pose in those openings. This is a, uh, another hospital, a smaller hospital for uh, craniofacial surgery, uh, surgery of this part of the mouth only. Here also, again, the open space acts uh, as a symbol of health. This is the small courtyards inside the hospital or inside the library of a medical college. This courtyard is inside uh, an agriculture college. This open space, this courtyard is an uh, amphitheater in an institute of technology. It's an engineering college. This courtyard is, uh, this house is uh, designed around this tree. Actually on the side there were, uh, the clients wanted me to build somewhere else, but when I saw this tree, I went and sat under it, I kind of touched it, I sat for some time, as if I was taking permission from the tree to build around it. And uh, fortunately, I thought it gave me <laughs> the permission. So I built around it, and now this tree has become the, uh, main space defining element or this is the tree which creates that ambience and gives that, brings the Gandhis, the people who stay there closer to the, closer to itself, closer to nature. The same tree. Again, as I think uh, he was saying, the materials are very important. The material used in this open space and in this building is entirely 
obtained from this particular site alone. Uh, no, not a single stone has been brought from outside. This was a sloping site, uh, terre, uh, a bowl. So this engineering college campus uh, was situated on this bowl with uh, open spaces which are terraced and uh, courtyards which are terraced like this. A school complex uh, with a large amphitheater for about 2,000 kids. Then open spaces uh, should have, I, I should have, and, and there's some examples of good uh, physical as well as visual connectivity with the inner spaces. The same tree which we saw from the living room, I mean this is how the tree is framed. This is from the dining space. This is uh, mm, an interesting project I and mean, actually this, uh, now it's not functioning there. But this was uh, designed for the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR, in the university campus near Pune, where uh, the director wanted a typical uh, rectangular building, the IT building, you know, with glass and aluminum facade, you know, the typical uh, IT stuff. So, but when I said, I didn't uh, argue with him, I said, let's go and see the site. But when I came to the site, I saw some very beautiful trees, this, that. And I asked the director, how about your scientists, because they are working on the language of computers. It's a very sophisticated thing, uh, because that, uh, their uh, uh, server here costs much more than my building. So they, I asked him, why can't your scientists come and uh, sit under a tree and work? He pondered for some time and he said, yes, why not? So what we created was, there is an air-conditioned working area inside, but we created this semi-open, uh, shaded, work area outside where the scientists could sit out with the laptops and work and these open spaces help the scientists to sort of you know bring about a freshness you know instead of sitting in a cooked in space and style they could come out the the landscape of around climbs right onto the top of the building so that shades the building makes it more geomorphic as well as reduces the air conditioning cost so this is the space, I mean, I, I just put another slide, like if I had agreed with that uh, director, I mean, they would have sat like this inside the uh, building, but now many times they come and sit outside like this under that uh, pergola, bamboo pergola. Sometimes what happens is, as we saw the, in the other slide, the open space is outside. Uh, this was uh, the site of my lake house uh, uh, near Kolhapur and uh, somehow the other I wanted to bring that entire thing as a part of my living room, as a part of my space, so it happened like this. So this is uh, my living room and that's the view that we get from there. Many times we have bisons grazing on the green uh, hills there. Nowadays, they have become fond of the mangoes which are planted. So they come into my property and eat mangoes. The bison. The bison. <laughs> this is from the upper floor. This is my studio, my workplace. Fortunately, uh, this is for the younger students. As architects, it's not necessary for us to confine ourselves to a small uh, office somewhere. We can be anywhere and work anywhere. And I've done all these projects by sitting in these remote areas. Five minutes. <laughs> this, in this case, the, this outside space was brought inside the house. Like that tree which was there, we built a house around the tree. So the tree came inside the house. And the lake and the hills remained like that. The same house. Then open space as participatory and interactive space, spaces which help us to connect with each other. This is the uh, amphitheater at the Institute of Management of Mysore. The same place. These these areas are very often used for sitting and interacting. The same space is used sometimes in the morning for meditation. It is used for small informal group meetings, or it is used for large functions like the, uh, uh, their jam sessions and music and all that. 
even the side passages and corridors are covered by creepers, they're not covered by slabs. Simple corridors can also can become very active open spaces. This is inside that uh, de addiction center which we saw earlier uh, in use. I mean that whole uh, the entire open air theater as it is being used. This is another project uh, in Hyderabad where we had these huge rocks on the site and we built around it. So here in this case, these were the rocks, and uh, they were at the edge of the site. I requested my clients, government clients, to acquire more land on this site, and we exchanged that rough undulating land of the farmers with our land, a uh, flat piece of land. So the farmers were happy. I was happy because these rocks came into my site and I could make a building that was my homage to this uh, million year old, old, uh, million year old uh, architecture, uh, natural heritage. And this is how it became. This was my office space in the beginning uh, under the shrubs, near the, under the tree rocks. Here too, not a single stone was brought from outside. All the stones uh, that we used in this building were obtained on the site. In this case, it's an Ayurveda college, so this uh, courtyard signifies um, that couple. And I'm, I'm not going to detail some because of lack of time. The meditation hall in an Ayurvedic spa. Sometimes terraces, as uh, Viraj was saying, can act as open spaces very well. This was a this was a large site for Sri Sri University in Bhubaneswar, where they had these laterite quarries. And uh, first I said no to them because it was an invited competition. But then I agreed because when I saw the site, it was so beautiful. So what I thought of doing was to create uh, like this was the quarry site on this side with a beautiful view there. So to give the land back to the site, so we created the building in such a way that the, the top of the building and the uh, top of that land became one. Became one and we got a garden on top of the buildings also. Here also there was a lake uh, on one side and there was an earthen dam. We re made a retaining wall, created shops at the lower level and the upper level was designed for a garden space. So the open space, again I'm, what I'm trying to show is how concrete or the man-made can complement the green and the open space, you know, it's like without that it would not have happened. Or in this case, uh, the terraces are used by the kids to play upon, play around as a school. Another school building where the terraces and open spaces became an amphitheater. Uh, so open space has a very small refreshing open patch of green, it can be a, in the toilet, like this, or it can be in an, in an operation theater. Just outside an operation theater, it's, I mean, it's totally uh, sealed. The window is double windows, but when the uh, doctor comes inside, or when the patient, if he's not anesthetized, when he comes inside, hey, this is what the operation theater looks like. <clears throat> so in today's uh, society, that is suffering from the fatty degeneration of our conscience, society that is suffering from its fatty degeneration of its conscience, where our single-minded pursuit of money is impoverishing our mind, shriveling our imagination and desiccating our hearts. Don't you think that we need more unified, natural, open spaces that can heal and that can improve the quality of our lives? Can we shift our emphasis for, from invulnerable exclusiveness to vulnerable inclusiveness? From inequity to equity. See, this is a space which has so much equity. And it's not like an exclusive space of a rich man's villa, world villa, but this is, these are equitable spaces, democratic spaces. From commodification to compassion, can we shift our emphasis from opaque compartmentalization to transparent interaction? Can we shift our emphasis from the artificial to the natural, from the glossy wrappings to inner content, from celebrity to sanctity? 
Thank you. Thank you, Shri sir. I would now call upon Mr. Salvador Rueda to come upon the stage, please. First, uh, I ask to you comprehension and compassion because my English is not very good, right? I hope my ideas will be uh, spread and understood. Uh, I want to Alcacia and above all and Nandan Balsaval, thank you for this invitation. I am very, very happy to, 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 to hear. Okay. You know very well the model, the urban model of Barcelona is internationally well known. But they forgot what happened with the a mobility urban model. And at the end is the current situation. It means that 85% of the public space related with the mobility. And it means only a one right, the displacement, the mobility only. Okay? It supposes very serious problem. Air pollution in a Barcelona area, metropolitan area, dying prematurely 3,500 people every year. 54,000 people, children also, has had asthma attacks. The 20% of the cancer of uh, Poland is related with the air pollution, is a war. Not only in Barcelona, we have one of the most team in epidemiology, and we know this, but in all the cities over the world have the same problem. Also, they don't uh, uh, take account the uh, heat, heat island and the wave of heat after that with the climate change. A lot of people is dying, above all the older children and uh, uh, persons with problems, uh, issues. And this, this is the reason for that we need to change all the aspects in our cities, above all, the urban mobility plan. The green areas disappear also. The scarcity is incredible, it's ridiculous. And the economic impact is also huge. In Spain, the World Bank make a report and uh, evaluate about 45 billion of euros, the impact, economic impact a cause of the uh, air pollution. Then we need to change very quickly this and other reasons and dysfunctions. 85%. The solution, in my opinion, is to build a new cell, name it superblock. The superblock, this is the current situation. And this is the superblock. The main street is uh, dedicated to the traffic, to connect one part with the other inside of the city. But inside of these ways, we liberate practically 70% of the public space. And it's very easy to understand because you go for here, and you go in, but after that, you go out. But you can connect with all the facades inside of the superblock. 
but it's silly to go in if you don't uh, have uh, make anything inside. Okay, it's silly to go around continuously. The bicycle and the pedestrian can through, but the cars not can through. Okay, can go through, and also the speed inside of the superlock is between 10 to 20 kilometers per hour. Because at 30 kilometers per hour of the 100 accidents between a car and a pedestrian, five death. Then we want to change the uses inside of the superblocks. And then we need to reduce the speed at this level. This is the solution for Barcelona. It's a proof for the uh, urban mobility plan for the city council of Barcelona. It's uh, already approved. Okay? It means uh, reducing from point, uh, 900 kilometers length to uh, three. 5,500 kilometers only. And what number of cars we need to reduce to make this and to maintain the functionality of the city? We need to reduce only 13%, one three, only. And the service of traffic in these rail lines is the same of the service of transit, traffic in the other, in the current situation. It means, it means the same speed of the cars here and the other scenario. It's only 13% and we can reduce about 70% of the public space, okay? For other users, not for mobility. This is the key. The integration of all the networks related with the superblocks, with this cell. Bus network, bicycle network, car network, and also green network is possible to include in this. And at the end, you have the different parts that you can liberate after that. Inside of the, of the superblocks, at the beginning, is not a superblock, it's a shape of superblock in the Cerda plan. He thought about to make bring the half, half uh, of the surface inside of the blocks. Okay? In the Masia plan, designed for uh, Le Corbusier for Barcelona. Is this the proportion of the green uh, and uh, leisure spaces designed for Le Corbusier? This is the current situation. That's ridiculous. Okay? And this is the super block solution. We want to change everything. Uh, we want to express the green areas, and we want to de design with three levels. The roof level, the ground, and the underground level. In all the cases, because after that we can introduce all the variables that the ecosystemic urbanism that we defined previously uh, needs. the current situation related with the uh, green areas. And this is with the super plots. Only for the public space. But we can liberate all the spaces. In the case of the, the, the streets, this is a project in this moment in process. In the first super block, in the fabric, so that fabric, in uh, Poblano, in Barcelona, okay? But 
this is the, the intersection of the interior uh, the streets inside of the super blocks. Is this. It suppose an and surface about 2,000 square meters, and each typical superwalk uh, could have uh, quite an hectare inside of the superwalk, new, totally new. And you can make this only with signals, venture and your, uh, vertical signals. Okay, very very cheap. 150 new squares is possible to uh, develop only with an idea with a new cell like the super block. This is the courtyard. Is a current situation and also the uh, provision of the new courtyards, green courtyards inside of the blocks in the Sorda fabric. Okay, this is the idea that I want to express. Or the green roof, okay? If not, if, if we don't have um, enough green area, we, we need a carpet, green carpet. If not, it's not possible to reduce the heat island, okay? It's the best air conditioning of our cities. In Jaipur, you know what represent this. This is the space currently related with the pedestrian, because we have in these streets a unique platform, 50% of our city. But this is the future with the super blocks. It means more than 6 million square meter more and without demolish any building is very, very cheap. It's perhaps one of the most recyclable projects over the world. Okay? And my interest above all is to express the most radical idea. Because in this moment, the unique right in the public space in Barcelona, in the 85%, is only mobility. And our maxima, maximum aspiration is to make areas, pedestrian areas. But pedestrian areas means pedestrian. And a pedestrian is a mode of transport. It's not a citizen. It's different. A citizen, it's a, it's citizen sorry, uh, will be citizen if uh, 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 he, can, he, can, uh, he can to develop other rights. For example, the leisure, the, the children playing in the streets, the fiesta, the export, leisure, okay? The second is the market, the interchange different kinds of interchange is one of the elements, the first elements to be a, a city. The third is culture, the culture, culture and knowledge in the public space. And the fourth is the democracy, like a Greek democracy. And also the displacement, not only uh, displacement. Displacement also is inside of the all rights that we need to be citizens, okay? This is the key. You know, if you want to uh, define city, a city, in my opinion, you have a city if you have public space. Because the public space is the common house, is the most important in the city, the most important. Okay, the second element is to the complementarity of the legal entities working together in a city. It's two elements to define a city. But the first 
is the public space. Perhaps you have houses and some streets, but it's not necessarily public space. Perhaps this urbanization or server is not a city. And with cities, okay, it's very different. And, to, uh, and if you want to, be, uh, to have cities, you need citizens, not pedestrians. Okay? It's very, very different. This is culture. All the uses that you can imagine is possible to develop. I, I, uh, I want to express my amazing surprise because in India, the uses is made also, are made also, but in a bad conditions between the cars, in, in, in difficult situations, OK? This uh, project of Superblocks is very spread for the medias and the journals over the world. The Guardian, the New York Times, the China TV, the German TV, the BBC, all of the uh, main uh, journals and medias over the world are interested in this, in this idea. I think it's very, very important to return to the citizens their cities. It's the most important, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>